Hi, my name is Jason Vaughn and I'm a physical therapist here at Slocum Orthopedics and I'm going to be discussing with you today lifting and bending mechanics. So many of us have heard the suggestion, lift with your legs or lift with your knees and do not lift with your back. What does that look like? Well, first of all, I'd like to show you two incorrect ways of lifting that many of us have probably done and then I would like to discuss the correct lifting and bending technique. First, I will demonstrate two common but improper lifting techniques. The first one is lifting with the back. So in order to protect the knees, someone may bend forward quite a bit at the back, grab a hold of the object to be lifted, primarily using your back to lift with and setting it down the same way. The second common but improper technique would be lifting with your legs or knees and keeping your back straight. Oftentimes people when they're lifting forward like this, they bend their knees far forward in front of them, keeping their back straight, trying to protect their back. In the same way as we bring it down, that puts a lot of pressure on the knees though. Those are two improper lifting techniques. I'll offer six technique suggestions on making lifting and bending as easy and safe as possible. Number one, reduce the speed of lifting. This is going to decrease the amount of jarring in your back as you take your time to lift the object. Number two might be fairly obvious, but reduce the weight of the object you're trying to lift, if at all possible. Such as if you're lifting a box of books, remove maybe three or four of the books out of the box to make the object lighter. Number three is very important. Try to reduce the distance between the object that you're trying to lift and your trunk. The closer you get the object to your trunk, the easier it is going to be to lift on your back. So instead of trying to reach the object out here, come closer to the object, Number four, maintain a small curve in your back while you're lifting an object. The incorrect way would be to turn your back like this. This is called forward flexion. What you want is you want to extend your back, which is called lumbar lordosis. Come close, extend your back. Number five, take advantage of your natural corset that your body has around the spine, otherwise known as your deep abdominals. To engage those muscles, you can just gently draw your belly button up and in towards your spine. And now this isn't a maximal contraction, it's just drawing them in gently. And you want to be able to maintain that position while you're still talking, while you're still breathing. Don't hold your breath. So. And lastly, number six, perhaps the most important, 
hinge at your hips. This means that you want your buttocks to go backward before your knees bend. This is going to engage some muscles in your buttocks that are very important for lifting. Hip hinging is an important but very difficult activity to do oftentimes. Um, so there's a few things that I can uh, teach you that will help you to perform this activity much more easily. The first one is you can just use a dowel at home. And what you'll do is you'll have three points of contact. One behind your head, one at your upper back, and then one at your lower back or sacrum area. And so that helps you to know that your body is in perfect alignment. Number two is you want to be about three inches from a chair or from a wall so that you'll have a target to shoot for. Number three, keep your chin tucked. And number four, you want your hips to move backwards before your knees bend. 